it's Bethany and Jen back with part two of the Uptown Debbie Brown tutorial. In our first video, we went over this, how to make, I mean, you went into great depth to really help us get there, right? As quilters, we're like, bags make us nervous. You helped us make it very procedural. We can do this with success to make either kind of the thread catcher or if you want to add the darling little handles, it's kind of more of the flower girl bag. I love the versatility. Obviously, it looks completely different in this collection. And this one today, again, was, remind me of the collection? Froth and Bubble. Yes, I keep forgetting that. Mm -hmm. It does not roll off my tongue, <laughs> naturally, um, by uh, Janet Nesbitt from Henry Glass. I love it's kind of more country looking. So we talked about how to make the bag, but I love that the Uptown Debbie Brown pattern that your mom created now a couple years back, also included a really cool pin cushion. We all know we need that. And sometimes I disconnect where my thread catcher is from my, uh, I'm, I'm, using, I'm usually losing one of the two things. And I love that this is actually connected. I can be successful mm -hmm. <laughs> even at a quilt retreat where sometimes those thread catcher bags are hard to come by. So we want to talk about how do we make that pretty pink cushion. So this is part two. If you didn't catch the first one, be sure to watch that. Subscribe if you haven't already done that. Bethany and I have got a lot on deck for 2023 and beyond, and you want to be a part of that. Let your friends know as well to subscribe. So talk to us about what do we, this looks like a great scrap buster, mm -hmm. whether you're using this collection or any collection. Correct. Sometimes you get these scraps, you're like, what do I do with this leftover fabric? This is a perfect Can't bring yourself one. to throw them away. No, yeah. and what a great thing to give as a gift, mm -hmm. right? So how do we make okay. this pin cushion? So believe it or not, we've got, if we can see here, kind of these weird little angles on here. I've got like a diamond piece. That, we're going to get all those shapes out of a strip piece unit. That's amazing. Okay. Pattern's going to do the work for us. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a couple things that are a little... Um, Unusual to us as quilters, we're used mm -hmm. to quarter inch everything. Yeah. Um, these strips to do nine strips, um, and our and our kind of our block finishing at eight and a half. We're doing a one and three eighths um, strip. Strip. Okay. Okay. okay so um, the way I got that was I have a one and a half inch ruler here, and then the little tiny tick marks coming down this um, are my one eighth mm. from the side. So if I want to bring this right to the flush with the fabric, that's my one and a half. I would just bring it over to that next little tick mark running down. Sure. That's my one and three eighths. I can cut that. Um, and I think it's nine strips sewn together. Um, it did say to cut these exactly to eight and a half. I always love to have something to square oh, up. Oh, yeah. So that's why this sure. one here is a little rickety. Um, I like to be able to square it up. Oh, okay? of course. Um, so I got my nine strips. It did say to press them all in the same direction. I believe this one I press all the seams open. I didn't find that it made a difference either way. Okay. Um, and then I did line this with a fusible interfacing. This okay. is Shape Flex. Yep, Shape, Shape Flex, Flex is a good one. Sure Taylor, mm -hmm. 950F. Uh, any interfacing would work? Uh, I like a medium weight okay. interfacing. Okay. Um, I love the Shape Flex here. It's just a dream to work with um, and adds um, not only like stability to our fabric, but when we go to fill this, it's going to add another layer to kind of protect of the outside from the inside. Yeah, okay. uh, that makes sense. It helps stabilize it, keep its shape. And so when we're putting in our, it's kind of like keeping it all yeah. contained. Yeah. I love it's, that. It's insurance and it's uh, it's going to make it last longer. Okay. And, you know, as we're stabbing this, you know, we might be destroying some fibers. We want to uh, reinforce that. Got it. Okay. I like it. Okay. okay, so um, we're going to trim this down to eight and a half square, and your pattern will have full pattern pieces for making both the bag and the pin cushion. I just want to show real quick. Also, if you don't have like a the eighth inch marks on your ruler, um, the, there is also a, a piece oh, for that strip that'll nice. show you, hey, okay. we'll just trace that and run that. But we cut out the pattern piece here, and I've got that already cut out, okay? And I can see here, if I line this up on the top, this is just a little, you know, my seam allowance might have been off by a tiny bit. Oh, it's fine. So we're going to trim this to eight and a half square. Oh, we are. Square, okay. Um, get it square. And then we're going to follow some of these lines here to cool. mark marker. Cool. I like so it. I'm going to get this squared up. Let's see. 
And then we might see here that um, you faintly see that diamond in the middle. Oh, I do. Okay. Right here. So that is actually the very top of our pin cushion. Okay. Okay. So it looks, you know, my, my pin cushion is here. Mm. I like to know. So it's, it's a three and a half inch. So if I just grab a ruler that's three and a half, that'll let me know. That's what the top of my pin cushion is going to look like. I see you kind okay. of centered over your center kind of strip, over your center kind strip. Of splitting that strip with the line. Mm -hmm. This is the three and a half inch grid grid you have? Correct. That's it's not like critical to the project, but it just gives me a good visual okay. on what I'm doing here. And let me, I got that square. Okay. That gives me a good line. And, um, this is my eight and a half here. And I'm just going to clean up this edge here. And while she's trimming that up, I think one of my biggest challenges, and you probably have this too, for my friends that quilt, what do I give people for their birthday, yeah. Christmas? And if anyone's going to appreciate a handmade product, it's a quilting friend. So I know that if I take the time and I repurpose my scraps into something beautiful like a pin cushion, everybody needs a lot of pin cushions. <laughs> What a great <laughs> gift, yeah. right? Well, I have so many different types of pens for different types of sewing. True. I might have five de dedicated pin cushions. <laughs> might have. Plus the one I keep empty just okay. for when I need to put a pencil. Yeah, I've got a lot. <laughs> Can't go wrong with a good pin cushion. And I, I love these because they're, you know, the walnut shells make them kind of heavy and mm -hmm. dense. So they're, I had a pin cushion given to me that was like filled with polyfill. It just flies. And it just flies away. Every time you reach for it, you hit it wrong. Uh, uh -huh. Plus they're, they're thick, you know, those needles don't hit all the way to the bottom. That's so. true. That's, uh, that's another thing. It doesn't bottom out. And then now it's mm -hmm. on your tape, scratching your table. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, what we need to do is basically transfer these dark dotted lines, or dark, dark solid lines onto um, our piece here. Sure. Um, you can't quite see through this if with, with a light box. So one thing I did was just folded this in half to kind of mark my center. And then I was able to measure and mark those. I know they're a 45 mm. degree angle. Oh, very okay. good. I see that. So I'm just going to mark my center. We're using you know, the friction pin, which is an iron off, of course. Um, and this is the wrong side, so it's not going to show anyway. Let's see. Let's do that all the way across. Okay. Same thing here. And this should, if my sewing is correct, be right in the middle Yep, of that yellow fabric. Good job. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're, you're always right on the money there. Yeah. Very accurate. Okay. And I, I'm just going to measure. That looks like it's one and three quarter inch. That's a good way okay. to do that. It's kind of you know it's kind of hard to get that right on yes. there. Another thing, um, one thing I did once was I lined this up and just kind of like stabbed through it. Yep. You know. Right. Um, I get that. Kind of your points and then just draw the line. Yeah. Between. Yeah. So sure. I actually a short diagram. Did kind of just do that and it showed up actually quite well. So I think I'll do that. And is the angle pretty important to be pretty accurate with that? Yeah. That's okay. gonna keep the shape. And then I'm gonna. Mark these as yep, what number three. They are. Sure. Um, just because knowing me, I'll mess it up if I don't. I don't know so about that. <laughs> from the edge, one and three quarter inch, and then it should be the same on the other side as well. So I'm going to mark that and then draw that. Nice. That's a great way to do that. And that's miter two. Two. So okay, we'll two. continue marking. Fantastic. Okay. Yes. They're not all facing the same direction. But that's that's not a, a problem at that's all. That's right. Okay. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to start with miters one and two. Okay. okay. This will go right sides together. I like to grab maybe a clip here and pin this just to keep it together. And we're going to sew a quarter inch down. And then we're going to sew right on that line all the way to the end. Oh. Okay. So this is what's going to add the sides to sure. our pin cushion. Okay. So same thing over here. We're going to go straight down to the line and then on the line. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so that'll be the first two, and then just two more scenes at the machine Maybe. to get that all together. How'd your mom always come up with this stuff? She couldn't help herself. I, just, I think it, it oozed out of her. It's just like it does out of you, how to engineer yeah. things, you know? Yeah. You just figure out very clever ways and, and, and yep. It's yeah. got, got to be a better way, right? That, yeah. that was always kind of the saying in the household. Is, I love that. Okay, I love so that about you. I'll get these done real quick. Okay. Okay, so we've got those two seams there, and I've got four and three. How this is gonna go is we will open this up to bring these two seams together, mm. okay? And then if we kind of pinch this, to me it reminds me of like a little wonton or something. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> keeping those seams aligned, that should go right there, okay? Same thing here on number four. Straight across. We are going to sew about an inch up from the end here. So what I'll do, let me I'll put this down to stabilize it, is I will start probably here and sew down till I'm a quarter inch from the edge, and then sew about an inch down. We're gonna leave a gap for turning. Yep, okay. yep. Um, and because I am prone to forgetting, I'm gonna mark that. That always helps to mark. <laughs> like, this is your stopping point. <laughs> Don't keep going. Hey, Miller, you know what you should do is not go past that point. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that same ripper and I get real close sometimes. Yeah, we, I've, we're friends. Mm -hmm. We know each other well. I can prove that um, you could use a seam ripper several hundred times and it's still good to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That you, they never wear out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All right, I'll get these sewn real quick. Okay. Okay, so we've got our little shape here. We're going to grab some scissors and trim off the excess here, about a quarter inch from the edge. And then I don't have to do any other trimming to get this turned right side out. That should be plenty sufficient there. This is so cool. I can see how <laughs> that interfacing really just kind of stabilizes everything, mm -hmm. provides a great foundation. And again, when I mean, you're poking this over and over again, we don't want walnut shells coming out of this mm -hmm. thing. You want another layer. I don't want to make a new pincushion every couple months. No. Nope. <laughs> because I need to. I want to do it because I want to, right? right. <laughs> All right. Should I do? Okay. So we started out with just that strip piece, nine strips all together. That's amazing, really, and how quickly this comes yeah, together. It's so fast. Oh, this is just the, well, an hour and a hour, hour and a half? Max. Maybe, maybe for your first one? Yeah, yeah. When you're still reading the pattern every step? <laughs> that's true. You know? We okay. all know what that's like. The first one takes you for, uh, not forever, but it feels you like know. it. Bit longer, yeah. Okay, we're ready to fill this bin cushion. Um, let me see. I'm going to mark the very middle real quick, just so I know where to put my button. Okay. And an easy way to do that is to just find the corners here. We'll go straight across and kind of pinch, and then straight across again. And right where those intersect will be my center. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just so I know where yep. to yep. put my button. Um, we are going to fill this with walnut shells. You got a little funnel? I do. I okay. do. All right. I want to brag about the walnut shells from Plum Easy. They're, they're the best that I've ever seen. Uh, they're cosmetic grade. Mm -hmm. um, they've been baked. So there's no, they're just as, like, so they're, they're as pure. They're basically sterilized. They're and... as pure as they can be. Mm -hmm. um, unscented and lavender scented with real lavender buds. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a lavender oil from France. I love it. I know sometimes you like the unscented. Mm -hmm. So depending on what you want, and it's probably at least one bag. This will be one whole bag will fill this pincushion completely. 
Okay. Yeah, you won't no need a, you won't need a okay. teaspoon more or less. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, by all means, grab your favorite scented, unscented, and about one bag per pin cushion. Mm -hmm. Actually, when um, I believe when Plum Easy was doing this, the pin cushion came before the filling. Mm. And then people said, well, do you have a filling? And we sized the bag of this to fit. Oh, my gosh. The smell. Yeah. The smell. I wish you could <laughs> smell this. Lavender is lovely. Okay. So. And one thing I'm doing here, you can kind of, kind of see from overhead, is I'm holding that fabric on the funnel. Um, sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. So that I'm not kind of losing this. Put it in. And then... All right. We'll, we'll... We might go grab a friend. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me like, when. No, you can keep going. All right. I'm going, I'm going. All right. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed. They're watching this in real time. Like, how much this can take? Keep going. Okay. We're going to oh, stop. Okay. Okay. We're going to stop, and then we're going to tap, tap, tap. And oh, yeah. Keep going. Yep. And it's going to feel like there's no way I can get this whole bag in here. I promise you, you can. We're going to stop. Right. And we're going to kind of push it out to the corners. Oh, this is cool. Okay, All right. folks, you've seen it. <laughs> it's the whole thing. Right. Oh, fun. Oh my gosh, these are so fun. Okay. That's a little dusty. Okay. We'll wash that I off. I love that. I'm going to use the point turner real quick to just help with this. Oh, sure. Yeah. Get the points out and also almost push the walnut shells mm -hmm. into these corners and crevices. Yeah. So what I want to do here is um, I'll kind of fold this under by about a, ha a quarter inch. Okay. Just like we, the, you know, the seam that we sure. did previously. Sure, quarter inch. And then uh, I just made a pin cushion, right? So to close this up, I'm going to grab some pins. That makes <laughs> sense. We're testing yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that will just keep that secure while I hand stitch this. Um, I haven't come up with a more convenient way to close this. Mm -hmm. Maybe hot glue if you were so inclined, <laughs> but uh, um, I just have a needle and thread. I usually start in this direction, kind of in the seam, and then turn it around and start going this way. Okay, so basically a really close whip stitch, so there's mm -hmm. no gap. There's no room for the walnut shells to come out. Right, right. And this, with the fabric being folded over and you have that layer of interfacing, it yes. really creates a tight little seal there. Okay. Um, so I go through, I think I think it's technically a ladder stitch is what I use. I know I've seen you do this. It's a really cool stitch. Hopefully we can grab mm -hmm. it from the overhead. But of course, if you're a quilter or maker, this is one of those things I'm like, figure out a way to get this closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, nice tight stitches, uh, maybe even kind of traveling down and almost coming back is kind of one of the things I see you do it's kind of like to just make sure it's yeah. completely secured and if you want to like if i'm going to draw this out what yeah. i'm doing is uh, i go over and then underneath my fabric i'm going here so i go over my this is basically my two seams together here okay and i'll go over the two and then carry it under back up to the top fabric mm. here um and then when i pull it tight kind of like a corset it kind of just Nice. Brings it together. I like that. Um, okay. I don't know. It just, it's one of those, just make yeah. it happen. It, it works for me. Yep. Um, some people have told me it's called a, a ladder stitch. I believe them. <laughs> <laughs> the absence of knowing. Yeah. Sure, so. I'll call it a ladder stitch. Yeah. Like, oh. That sounds not made up. I uh, will use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hey, while, you know, she's stitching that up. Um, I can think of, I'd say, at least a dozen people I want to make one of these for, for with some of my favorite scraps. And I love that, too. You could kind of covertly ask a friend, what's your favorite color? You know, mm -hmm. we've got scraps of, of course, every color in our stash. <laughs> Asking and, for a friend, though. No, no, <laughs> no reason. And be able to make the, your friend's favorite colors. I love that. Okay, so we're getting close. My favorite part is tufting this with the button on the front and back to kind of, you know, because this is kind of bean baggy right yes. now. Yes. Um, I promise we're almost there. Yeah, take your time. This must be done. Thread, pop that 
not through. That should be a beautiful little seam there. Yeah? Perfect. It is pretty. Okay, so we did mark the center on the front. Yep. Okay, I know where the center is because I've got yep. crossroads there. Exactly. Let's see, I picked out some, I like these teal buttons for this. I thought that was a really pretty combination here. Um, and we're going to grab just the longest needle you've ever seen. Uh, These are doll making needles, but because we are going to be sewing the front button to the back button, anchoring them together, yes. we need a, a needle that'll go through the whole pin cushion here. Okay? Yeah, definitely, and definitely that quilting weight thread. Yeah. It's heavier. Yeah, go get yourself a very strong thread. We like, this is a hand quilting thread, so That's it's... Right. Um, I think the little sticker came off. I don't I don't know what the weight is on this thread. We'll be sure to have that, of course, in the link below. But trying to use regular 50 weight thread, even if you double or triple, it's just not going to hold up mm, in I time. Find, yeah. You it, it just get a spool yeah. of that. You're going to have a lot of reasons to use it over time. Okay. And then one thing I do is I do double my thread. Okay. Oh. And I am going to thread this through the butt. It might look a little weird. This is another trust the process moment from Bethany Miller. Okay. okay. Yeah, I've had a lot of these moments I'm gonna, where I'm like, okay, I know that they're going to come out somewhere with a through. really good destination. Okay, I'm going to go through my knot here because uh, sometimes the thread pulls. Th if I if I knot it and put it in my pin cushion, You're right. it pulls through the pin cushion. Okay, so I'm basically knotting it to my button first. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll trim that. And that'll be my back button. So just in case a thread does show, it's on my back. Okay. So That's anchor that first. Smart. And then we are going to go straight through. And then I'm going to bring this up and find, I have my center mark there. Right through that. And pull this button tight. And I would kind of, for the first couple passes, need to make sure my thread's not mm -hmm. traveling on me. Okay. We're gonna get that nice and center. The Ooh, this one. is this is a weapon here. Yeah. Okay. One, two, and hopefully, hopefully we can get this through the button on the back. And if it, while it's still not super tight, it's easy to exactly um, kind of take a look. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, you know we might need to grab a friend, but after we've made a couple passes, we can start tightening this, and that'll tuff this into that beautiful pin cushion that we have here as the sample. Oof. I love that, kind of where it goes down. Mm -hmm. it, it just makes it all tight. Let me see. Oh, almost, okay. And then I don't know if I'm going through the same holes. I just know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll just... My mom always said, you got to tap it and tap it because it'll settle. And if you don't, exactly. it'll be loose in a week. Right. It fills out it. these corners. Mm -hmm. Everything's. Yeah. So I'll, I'll sometimes push those together. And I'm pulling on this. Not, not, not enough to break it because I've done that even with the hand quilting thread. But enough to get a nice tight um, tuft between these two. There we go. All right. Um, I think I'll do... One more pass. Ah, right <laughs> hey. there. It's, well, it's stabilized, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. going anywhere. Okay. That's and then, great. Um, with the doll needle, sometimes it can be a little tricky to tie this off. And I've done dozens of these. Let me show you what I do, okay? Okay. It's going to feel um, like you're being a little violent with the pin cushion. I will take the butt end or the, the eye end of the needle and pop it into the button and go underneath. So I'm not going back through the bottom. Right. Okay. Go through. And then we'll go around a couple times. I think technically if you're doing like a shirt button, it's supposed to be six times. Oh, I, don't know. I did not know this. I, I, I read it in an article. <laughs> Okay. I saw it on TikTok. Okay. And then I'm going to tie one knot here. Oh, nope. I want that around my button. Okay. I'm a professional. You can do this. <laughs> All right. There we go. And then I'm going to tie another knot in the 
um, thread, but it's not going to be down towards the bottom. It's going to be just kind of in the thin cushion or, or in the thread up here. Okay. okay. And then we're going to bury this underneath and then kind of pop that knot through. So just like an extra little bit of security to get that tied through. So it should get it pop, get popped through. Okay. That's your pin cushion finished. Aha. Wow. It's, it's so darling. cute. Oh my gosh. It's just so sturdy. Mm -hmm. I just, I have to do it. Mm -hmm. And even the longer pins that we have, mm -hmm. flower pins, that one, of course, Yeah, is this is going to go straight through. When I store these, I usually kind of store them at an angle so that I'm not, oh, yes, I'm not catching yes, on yes. them. Yes. Um, and even with the seams, even with the shape flex on the back, these mm -hmm. they go in perfectly. Yeah. Oh, so, I love it. Just beautiful, beautiful. Um, technically, that's the back. Yeah, that's that, true. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the front here. I know. I um, like them both. I love these. Just kind of just it's this almost like chevron shape Isn't we get that here. Awesome. I just have so much fun with these. That is so cool. And again, I feel like that's almost like a bonus. Now, let me ask you this part. Mm -hmm. If we want to connect the pin cushion to the bag as mm -hmm. shown, how it's kind of, it's got this hook. How do we do that? We could, of course, keep them separate. Mm -hmm. But if we want to have that arrangement, we're at the quilt retreat. I'm losing. This I've got, is my thread catcher pin cushion yeah. set. I'm showing off. And people are going to ask me about it. Okay. Now what? <laughs> okay. How do we connect those? So if we see here, I have hooks on the back and then eyes or loops on the pin cushion. Yes. Okay. So they connect right in. So, you know, on the edge of your table. Oh, I love it. Right there. We have it kind of showing you here on the little stool. Um, we are using, they are covered hook and eyes. Okay. okay. So it's basically a metal uh, shape here that is covered in a cord. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, if you've got maybe a curved needle, you can sew around through the holes in this. Um, mm. With a straight needle, you can go straight through the cord. You, you, you know, you'll butt up against the um, the metal in there, um, but not enough to kind of cause any damage. So, shall All right. we? I want to. Yeah. I want to. I want to show people. I know that most people are just going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I, I or like. like Ooh, you know what I've got, and they'll exactly. Right. Okay. Um, your pattern pieces do have positions marked for this. Okay, so I've got the eye there. If I was really smart, I would have done this while I had it. <laughs> sure. Uh, unsewn. But I know that this is the um, piece here. Like if we wrap that around, that's my pin cushion, right? Oh, uh, right, 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 okay. right, right. So basically those two eyes are going to go right on the like just about a quarter inch away from the corners. Sure, okay. I can see that on the one mm -hmm. there. It's definitely on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I've I've tried this a couple couple ways of doing maybe sorry the the eyes here. I tried it with the hooks, and I always ended up sewing them on the wrong way. I have found it's it's easier for me to sew the eyes, and you want them kind of sticking out a mm -hmm. little bit so that the bag is not interrupting anything. Um, and then I. Put my sewing needle over here. Okay, well, we can get set up with a new needle. Yeah. I can totally do this. I see it. Good work. Oh, my. Okay. So if I'm sewing this on, um, I did want to show that there is, like, a oh. cord on this. Okay. So your needle's not going to go through the very center, but it can kind of skim the, the edge of that mm -hmm. to get through there. So um, I actually... Would take mine and do a couple pins to kind of hold this in place, um, and you can go right through like the fabric of that cord to kind of hold that in place uh, while you sew, and then you're sewing through the cording and the pin cushion at the same time. I see. Okay. This is how you're attaching it. Mm -hmm. And you can go, you know, underneath. And then through the middle here, um, which is kind of hard with a straight needle if you want to do like big loops around this. Okay. But uh, one thing I liked about these um, hook and eyes is that you can sew right into the material wrapped around them. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you would sew all the way around, all the way around. Sure. Mm -hmm. On the uh, pin, sorry, the thread catcher, there's, again, on the pattern piece, it's marked where you would put your hooks for mm -hmm. that. And they just hook right together 
that's a beautiful little set for sure. patchwork and sewing. And you could go shallow to try to keep the thread mm -hmm. not coming to the inside of the bag. Yeah. Oh, sew yeah. those on mm -hmm. and then hook it together. Yep. That is just amazing. Well, I am so excited now <laughs> to unpack the Uptown Debbie Brown. I've been wanting to, to really just show people um, what it produces as Emma Mace in one little pattern. You get that, and then you could do that, but then there's the pink cushion. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Bethany, for unpacking that. Show us your mom's uh, pattern and then extra techniques that you found that were even more helpful. As always, you always find an even more efficient way um, <laughs> to get to the great results. So uh, we appreciate you joining us for part two of Uptown Debbie Brown. Again, if you didn't catch the first part, to do the bag, either the thread catcher or kind of a little flower girl bag. Be sure to check that out. Subscribe, let a friend know. Bethany and I have so much coming your way. You definitely want to check out all of our videos and we look forward to seeing you soon on another Shabby Fabrics tutorial.